Mm -hmm. I want to, um, okay, the theme for today's uh, women evangelism is um, stop worrying and start living. But I want to start by asking a question. Is it really possible to live a worry-free life? Some people or a lot of people might say no. And some people might say yes. Because the world we live in today, we have so many things to worry about. Sometimes it might be our health, it might be our jobs, it might be our finances, our children, our marriage, so many things to worry about. So when you look at it ordinarily, it's really not possible, some we say, to live a worry-free life. But the Word of God said that with God, everything is possible. Sometimes, some of us, when we go to sleep at night, we might not be able to sleep because of one thing or the other we are worrying about. Some of us, we will sleep immediately, but in the middle of the night, maybe around 2 or 3 or 1, something will like tap you and wake you up and begin to remember, remind you a lot of stuff that is going on in your life. And at the end of the day, you'll find out that that's the end of that sleep for that night. <laughs> you will not be able to sleep again. And when you wake up, you will be so tired. You will be feeling miserable. And when you look at it, you find out that after the whole worrying and not sleeping, you were not able to accomplish anything. That problem was not solved. The problem was, is still there. Another thing is this. Worrying brings fear. Because while you are worrying and thinking about those things, fear will grip you. Because you'll find out that you'll not be able to solve it and you don't know what to do. It brings depression. It also brings sickness. It makes you feel sick too when you worry too much. I don't know about all that, but it happens to me. But today, I want to let us know that it is really possible to live a worry-free life. If we deliberately and consciously make effort to stop worrying. Though I personally know that it is not easy, but like I said earlier, with God, all things are possible. There is a song that says, why worry when you can pray? Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus and he will see you through. Amen. Matthew 6, 27 says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature. And Matthew 6, 25 also said, Therefore, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat nor drink. For God takes care of even the birds. So if he can take care of the birds in the field, how much more we, us, the human being, because there is this Bible, um, um, this Bible quotation that said that we are the masterpiece of God. We are his creatures. But out of everything he created, he made us special. Out of the work of his hands, we are the masterpiece of all his creatures. So we are so special to him that he takes care of us. If only we believe. So, um, another thing is this. He said, Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Cast all your worries, burdens, to Jesus, to him. He is the master. Leave it there. Place it at his feet. Some of us, we come to church, we cast our worries to Jesus, but when we are going home, we tarry it again. 
Yeah, we, we, we say, okay, we pray, the, everybody prays, we say hallelujah and all that. We place it at his feet. But when we are leaving this place, we are picking it up again. Because on the way to our home, we start all over again and begin to worry, Lord, uh, you said you will do this. In fact, I did that and I'm still doing it, but I say, God help me and help all of us. <laughs> because you say, you promised me since uh, last year that you will do this. In fact, how many prophets have told me uh, that you said that you will do it? And this year is coming to an end, you've not done it. We start all over and all over again. May God help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Another thing is this, worrying does not change anything. It does not solve problems. Crying and blaming God does not move God. Worrying does not move God. You can wake up in the morning and you blame God all you want. Telling him, you said you will do this, you have not done it, like the preacher said today. God, sometimes we ask God, have you done your own part? And me, uh, us, we don't know if we really or we might not have done our own part. We might sit down and blame God. It doesn't move him from here to there. If you sit down and cry, oh, till Jesus comes, it does not move him. What I even find out is that he doesn't even like us when we cry. Because crying shows unbelief and weakness. So he doesn't even like it. So don't even think of going there, crying. <laughs> what moves God is faith, trust, and obedience. These three things. Somebody said that nobody can make you happy except yourself. If you think that somebody somewhere can come and make you happy, except you are determined to be happy yourself, that's when you will be happy. Learn how to control your thoughts. Because your mind is able or capable of bringing in a lot of thoughts into your mind. And if you allow it, it will keep on bringing stuff. And you will keep worrying. But you have to learn how to control it. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 5 says, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, so pulling down of strongholds, Casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So you have to learn how to cast down all those evil thoughts, evil imaginations. You have to learn how to pull them down. They will come. Whether they will come, they will surely come. But when you allow them, they are there, they stay there, and they will never go. That's where depression, a lot of stuff comes in. Think what God thinks and say what God says and you will get what God says, what God wants you to get. Amen. The way to live a worry-free life, one, is by living one day at a time. By focusing and thinking of what you have, not what you don't have. All the good things that the Lord has done for you, you have to always meditate on them, think of them, think about them, and give thanks continually. You wake up in the morning, there is no money in your purse. But sometime last week, you had more than enough. Why not say, God, I know I don't have money today, but last week I had more than enough. I thank you, Lord, because I know that you will replenish my purse. Amen. I know you will make it full. Amen. Maybe you went to the hospital and the doctor said something and there is sickness. But it was not there yesterday. God protected you from when you were born till that day the sickness was found out. So why not say, God, I thank you. Because I know that I've been in divine health ever since I was born. Now, this sickness is detected. It's not meant to be. Yes. It will not stay in me. Amen. Because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the word of God says that by the stripe of Jesus, I am healed. Yes. You keep repeating the word. Let me tell all of us, as I'm talking to everybody here, I'm talking to myself. This Bible, I don't know, everything you want is here. Yes. But you just have to read it. You just have to search it. 
You just have to find out the promises of God concerning your everyday situation. If it's sickness, there are so many promises concerning sicknesses. Choose one or two or three. Begin to prophesy it to you, to yourself. <coughs> say, this sickness, you can even talk to the sickness. If it's headache that is troubling you, say, you headache. Or you, every spirit that is behind this headache on my head, in the name of Jesus, I command you to live. Amen. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Out, in Jesus' name. Amen. You command it. And you now say, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you have no place in this body. Out. Then you choose a uh, promise for healing. Apart from by this blood of Jesus, I am by the strife of Jesus Christ, I am healed. There are so many other promises concerning healing. Begin to minister, begin to say it to yourself. And before you know it, you will not even remember that uh, there is one element or one sickness in your body. It will disappear because you rejected it. Another thing I do is that sometimes if there is something like that, I will just tell my body, you, my body, reject this sickness. Reject it. Reject it. You sickness, I reject you out of my body. You, my body, expel it. You know, you command your body to expel it out, to take it out. And it goes away. It works for me because I believe in the word of God. And I believe that there is nothing this God cannot do. Yeah. If only you believe and trust Amen. him. You have to trust him, knowing that he is able, knowing that he will do whatever he says he will do. He said he died poor, that we may be rich. Even if we are poor, know that he is able to make you rich. And he will do it, but he says in his own time. Because people like me, I'm always in a hurry. I want it today. But sometimes he doesn't work that way. Like the preaching of today, his ways is <laughs> higher than our way. He's not the same. I mean, some people, they need a green card. We all want it today. But he takes his time. Because he will give it to us when he will not, there won't be any sorrow at all. So whatever it is, your business. He said that wherever the soul of our feet touches, that we will possess. When you get to your business in the morning, speak. Tell that business, your business, the word of God said that wherever the soul of my feet touches, that I will possess. All my possessions, I will possess it today. Lord, send down to the four corners of the world, your angels, to bring all my customers, the people that will bless me today. You say before you leave your house, and when you pray, don't just wait until you go to a quiet place in your house. Pray all the time. While you are driving to work, while you are getting, uh, getting out of car, while you are in the bathroom, anywhere. But make sure you use the promises. Because to me, it works like magic. When you pray with the promises of God, it works <coughs> just like that to me. And I believe it works. But you have to believe it. And you have to obey God and say what he says and think what he thinks. He said you will make it, and you will make it. Don't think otherwise, because if God said that he will bless you and you start thinking, uh, I don't think he will do that, you will never get that blessing. And if he says you are healed and you say, oh, I don't think uh, that, um, you might be sick and uh, the devil will be telling you, listen, this sickness is unto death. And God will now tell you, no, you will live. So who do you want to believe? You have to believe God. The Lord said that I will live and I will live. So you sickness, you're not going to kill me. And you have to go. And it will go. Amen. Amen. So you need to read and search for the promises of God concerning every situation in your life. You need to memorize them so that at any point in time, even when you don't have your Bible with you, you can be able to pray immediately using the word. Make it a habit of praying, like I said earlier, everywhere, every time. Don't wait until you get to that quiet place. Because Jesus is anywhere. And he can listen to your promise, I mean to your prayer. He is everywhere at any point in time. When you wake up, determine how you want your day to be. 
and tell the Lord about it. You can also command the day and say what you want the day to be like through prayer. And you find out that at the end of the day, it will be exactly what you want. And you end up thanking the Lord for it. That is what I practice too. Sometimes, maybe today, I would have known how tomorrow will be, that it's not going to be a pleasant day. I'll begin today to command tomorrow and say, you are the day that the Lord God Almighty has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in you. I will not sorrow in you. I will not lose, you know, whatever I think that the enemy, or the enemy has prepared for tomorrow. I will begin today to cancel it. And at the end of the day, I get good results. It works. Focus on God more, not on your problems. Focus on God and keep giving thanks for what he has already done. Because in my place, they say, when you thank a king for what he did for you, he will do more. So if you thank God for what he has already done, you keep giving him thanks. You want promotion. He has already promoted you before. Why not tell him, Lord, I know you have promoted me wherever I am today. You are the one that did it. Please, Lord, I want another promotion. But thank you for the one you have done. And thank you for this one you are about to do. As we continue to do all this, I pray that the Lord will help us to live a worry-free life and also to win the battle of our minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.